Hello, hello, and welcome everybody back to another wonderful episode of the Unilube podcast. Today, we've got a bit of a special podcast because we have finally announced only, what, six months early, Unite 23! Yay! Let me hear a cheer from my podcast uh, panel members. Yay! <laughs> I wasn't sure if you wanted <laughs> to shine it Now you can applaud, Sim. <laughs> Throw up those hands. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so good. Okay, so if you're new to the Unity podcast, you're probably thinking, what's Unite? Well, I'm going to give you the quick rundown before we go and interrogate all our wonderful podcast panelists about everything Unite. So, Unite 23 is Unity's employee experience conference. We like to think of it as a lot more than just an employee experience conference. It's an experience in of itself. This year, we're coming to you September 13th and 14th for two full days of sessions um, with special guest speakers. We're going to be talking about implementing employee experience technology. And we're also going to be tackling all the big themes, internal comms, internet governance, all of that wonderful stuff that really gets our audience uh, participating and keeps them up at night worrying about how they're going to really optimize that digital employee experience for their organizations. So we're going to be digging into all of that and much, much more. Now, if you're wondering about the format for Unite 23, because we have mixed it up over the years, we've done all in person, we've done hybrid for multiple different cities around the world. Well, this year, again, changing things up, uh, we're providing a number of different ways for people to attend. So the first thing is you can come in person to both full days and join us at a wonderful location in London. So all the sessions live on stage, lots more room for error, which makes hosts like people on this call very nervous. But um, don't worry about that. Come down, see us in London. Now, if you can't make it to London, not to worry, you can do hybrid. Maybe come for one day um, and then watch the other content online. Some of that content is going to be live streamed. And then finally, of course, you can just go remote entirely if you'd like and just check out all of those sessions in the live stream. But the most important thing is there are no pre-recorded sessions. No matter what way you choose to enjoy Unite 23, it's going to be live, live, live. Um, Kaz laughing, he knows we love live, live, live. <laughs> and speaking of live, live keynotes with two special guests. Um, so the first special guest um, you know, personal fan favourite and uh, a favourite of mine, Stephen Fry, um, is going to be coming and presenting a session, which is going to be absolutely incredible, but also joined by the incredibly impressive Grace Beverly as well. So two special guest keynote speakers, um, which you can look forward to. Now, in terms of the format, there's going to be loads of great stuff. And breaking it down into different tracks. We've got a comms track, we've got a tech track, and we've also got a deep dive track, um, which is going to be more kind of hands on uh, round table discussions and really try to break the back of big employee experience challenges um, for all the organizations in attendance. And finally, there's going to be lots of fun, and everyone on this call can attest to the levels of fun. Um, there's going to be the workout on day one which i always choose to skip maybe this year will be the year i dust off my trainers and there'll also be a great party as well the london calling party as well as an after party on day two so there we have it an action-packed agenda but let's find out a little bit more detail from our wonderful uh, podcast panelists and hosts of unite 22 all returning to the big screen um, so going over to you first, Kaz. Kaz, how are you doing today? Are you doing well? Hello, I am. I'm a little bit under the weather, but just talking to you <laughs> about this is getting me excited. It's mind of a matter, so... Nice, that's strong. I appreciate your commitment to the Unite cause. So there you go, if you're wondering. This is the kind of quality that you can expect to see on the day. <laughs> um, exactly. <laughs> good stuff. And then hopping over to Ian. How are you doing, Ian? 
Oh, I'm doing well, Matt. Also, <clears throat> a little little hoarse today, but likewise oh, yeah. feeling. Ooh, talking about those excuses. <laughs> They're just yeah. trying to set the bar low for the on stage presence. <laughs> hey, listen, okay. Last year was my first rodeo. I'm I'm honored and you know whatever properly chuffed. I think the Brits might say to get the call back the second year. So yeah, I'm, nice it's good getting to be. that call up. Repeat call up. Um, well, it was certainly fun hosting with you in New York last year. So I'm sure we'll have a great time this year as well. And coming to us from the middle of the night, Sim. How are you doing, Sim? Good. I think I'm the only one that's uh, not sick at the moment. So. <laughs> yeah. um, what Can't time complain. is it for you? What time is it for you right now, Sim? It's uh, 11 p.m. But Ian and I had to toss up who was going to do the morning shift and who was <laughs> going to be the night shift. And uh, it, got, it got to me. I feel like you always get the short straw, Sim. It's always like... <laughs> 6 a.m. or midnight for you. <laughs> that is tough, that is tough. But with all of you coming to London in person for Unite, that means there'll be no time zone challenges. Hopefully you're gonna come a few days before Sim and kind of you know, level out a little bit, get used to the, the time zone difference ahead of joining us uh, on site for, for Unite in London, right? Yeah, definitely. And I, I think I masked it last time, sleep throughout the whole flight and it'll be fine. That's my trick. Ah, okay, that's a pretty long flight to sleep through. You must be really good at that. I really Save struggling. up a few days. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. Okay, cool. Okay, guys, Unite 23. It's big, it's bold, it's back. <laughs> All the bees. Um, what parts are you guys looking forward to the most? Like, tell me about it. Actually, no, wait. Hold that thought. Let's do a point comparison. Let's start with what you enjoyed the most about last year and we'll see what things they brought back that we enjoyed the most. I'm gonna to go to you first, Sim. Sim, what was your favorite memory from 22? Okay, so I was gonna take Taz's, uh, which would be Stephen Bartlett, but I'll come up with something else. Taz, I'll save that one for you. Um, I think for me, especially being in Australia, my favorite part was being all together live Yeah. again. Even I missed Ian, I missed Matt, you guys were on the other side of, of the world. So I'm looking forward to you guys all being together. But I really enjoyed that session, um, being with Kaz, all the after parties, seeing our Unily staff, our clients, people um, in the industry as well. I loved being together. Yeah, do you know what? That's a really good one. And there you go, right there off the bat with now every session being live from one location, a bigger opportunity to bring to, you know, bring all these people together, right, Sim? So like, you know, even more opportunity for, you know, us to connect and to connect with, with our, our wonderful audience as well. So that, you're really selling the in-person lure. Come meet us in London, you know. We're as much fun in person as we are on the podcast. We might even And be if not, fun. you can test it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Okay, that's a really good one, in-person connection. And do you know what? We've lost a little bit of that over recent years. So it is quite a unique um, opportunity, which I think we should all seize more of. Um, okay, Ian, coming to you, because you're next in the lineup on this uh, recording screen. Unite yeah, 22, got... best bit. <laughs> you know, honestly, I there was a lot of sessions I really enjoyed, but I'm not going to quite say what sim said but i think like the chaos of it all was like something i didn't appreciate in the moment but looking back i was like wow what a time to be alive all these producers us scrambling back and forth trying to make sure <laughs> things are going in the right sequence we get the timing right so that honestly the whole seeing how the sausage got made was my favorite part i think um i hate that metaphor but it's all i got right now yes yeah, um, pretty nasty <laughs> metaphor yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but I mean, sessions with, you know, Katie Goodyear were great um, from CA. Yeah. She had a really interesting one around adoption. It was great catching up with like Seth Godin before and after the session mm -hmm. that he did. Um, you know, yeah. it's really, it's hard to put your finger on just one thing because there was so much to talk about. Yeah, a lot goes into it. I think the chaos is something to be embraced with any kind of big conference like this. You just kind of have to expect the expected as we there always say and just kind of <laughs> roll with the punches but it's great fun right like you know that's part of what like brings so much energy to to the unite conference is that you know we put a lot of time and effort into it and then um <laughs> all hell breaks loose on <laughs> day you don't one know what's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> you never know you never know and last but by absolutely no means least kaz <laughs> just buying time, man. Yeah, he's back. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> so, United 22, I mean, you know, best bit for you. Um, I'm, I'm actually a bit of a geek. I rewatch a lot of the content back, probably like once a mm. month. But <laughs> they're all on YouTube now, so if anyone out there didn't miss one of the sessions or is just joining this year, you can go back and watch it. Um, so, Seth Godin I just love because like his presentation style, now I have to do a lot of presentations. So it's like hearing mm. how engaging he is and how passionate he is. And we always talk about um, how to engage your employees, like your customers. Mm. And I really like how he bring, brings that concept together. And nowadays I see so often how like those concepts actually come true. They definitely um, have lived to come true this year as well. Um, we, we spoke about in some of our trends how we want employee alignment and a lot of that comes from the content that Seth delivered as well. So from a work perspective, um, I love the Seth Godin session. Um, but of course, uh, and, and Zim set me up for this because if I didn't say this now, <laughs> that would have been like a, a really backhanded um, way to pick that up. But yeah, of course, the Stephen Bartlett session was probably my yeah. favorite because um, I was there in person interviewing him. And um, I've, I've watched it back as well and like he's just so and you feel it in the moment he's so um he's so interested and so intelligent when it comes to like understanding the employee challenges you see the kind of knowledge and the the, the knowledge he's picked up from interviewing so many different people and being able to just tap into that even for a short while i think was incredibly useful for whoever was in the audience, whether you're in HR, whether you're in IT, in comms, there were so many tidbits you could take away from that that um, I think were, were incredibly useful, so yeah. Yeah, do you know, I thought that was a really good session as well. Um, that was really good. Um, and I think for me, I'll tell you, my favorite bit has to be the, the kind of the speakers, the case study stories, um, like, you know, collectively there are some standout ones but you know i don't play favorites i'm not gonna call out specific sessions <laughs> however i mean like you were literally just naming so who should attend unite that's a great question internal communicators hr you know um it there's something for all of these kind of um you know different roles within the, the modern enterprise um and there's something to be learned from almost every session across all of those disciplines I and mean, i think for me, that's why my favorite bit is the customer stories, because they get you really close to what's actually happening. You know, we talk a lot about like the theory behind how you can increase engagement and, you know, how internal communications has a really significant role to play in, you know, retaining top tier talent and, you know, driving, um, you know, uh, higher levels of, of employee engagement across the organization. But actually hearing how that's been implemented in different organizations, especially those businesses which are operating at scale across across the world, um, it's just really interesting. It's the kind of insights you just can't get anywhere else. So for me, I think those kind of case study tracks were always really good, um, although I'm always starstruck by the, uh, the guest speakers. <laughs> uh, but, but that's all good. Okay, yeah, I mean, like, incredible, incredible stuff in Unite 22. I'm surprised no one said the after party, probably because you guys don't remember it, you were all too uh, <laughs> enjoying yourselves, shall we say. <laughs> well, what actually happened was that at, at, in London, by the time we left the studio and got to the after party, everyone else had been going for half a day, so <laughs> we had a lot of catching up to do. <laughs> I bet, I bet. Um, but yes, okay, I mean, United 22 was a blast. Unite 23, I think, promises to to top that. We always push ourselves to do more, to do even better than the year before. I think it's so good that we're getting together in London, but let's take a little look at that agenda together now. Um, and, you know, who's had a look at the agenda already and has spotted some things that they want to call out that think are going to be really good? I do. Yeah, I've been, I've been helping to shape some of it, so uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not, I'm not just the, the star scenes. pupil I have been. Yeah. <laughs> um, nice. So, um, like earlier, you said some of those customer stories, especially for those that are actively working on, on platforms and employee experience, there's always seeing how other organizations can do it are incredibly, incredibly useful. Um, there are a couple of ones that I remember hearing the story from, and I'm thinking this is going to be a really great session. Of course, mm -hmm. they're all great, but a couple of ones I want to call out. One being um, from from Pearson, um, and, and Pearson have, have 
deliver an incredibly data-driven approach to incrementally improving their employee experience platform and they measure it by all the Gallup measures and so hearing that kind of data-driven approach mm. to ensuring that you're continuing to improve your employee experience um, will be really interesting. I, I love a bit of geek sometimes when it comes to data so seeing that data come to life will be really interesting. And the other one was a story that I didn't expect to come to light, but it was talking about completely different topics. And then I heard one thing around how, um, this was uh, Kersner, so Kersner, one of our, our keynotes. Um, and generally what they've done is embed the kind of mobile app, the employee app as the center device, the center app that helps to unite all of their employees. And a lot of companies do well with desktop adoption, getting their knowledge workers on the platform, mm -hmm. but really struggle when it comes to the employee app and frontline workers. And Curzon seems to have mastered it. I think, um, and I don't have the data to hand, but when I was looking at the data, I think they have our most highly adopted employee app. So they've really done well in, in getting their frontline employees to use it. And they've got productivity use cases, they've got culture use cases. So that's one I'm gonna be really, really excited to hear. So, okay, cool. So we've got Kersner um, talking all things employee app. That's on day one, part of our day one agenda. And Pearson, Kers, remind me, where are they on our agenda for Unite 23? I think they're on day two. They are on day two. They're actually on the exact same time on day one and day two. That's 4.15 p.m. BST. Because um, we have now done the clock change. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> which makes everything really difficult to work out for anybody who's not in England right now. Um, but you will see that that agenda on unly.com forward slash unite is all going to show in, you know, different time zones and things like that. So you'll be, it'll be very easy on the uh, the interweb to, uh, to see all of that detail. Two great sessions. Absolutely looking forward to them both. Love what you're saying about the Curzon session on the employee app stuff. It's a really tough one to get right. And, um, you know, it can be really pivotal for organizations with frontline workers. So two amazing sessions that you've called out from our Unite 23 uh, agenda. Sin. Can I add to that one? Yes, yes. <laughs> I, I can see the twinkle in your eye. I knew you had something to drop in here. You said app. I'm like, I love app. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, no, but I, I even think from talking to a lot of our clients post Unite last year, the sessions that they really enjoyed were the ones hearing from other clients and other organizations as well. And I actually did spot the uh, Mastering Mobile, creating an app that employees love session because at the moment I do have quite a few clients that are rolling out the mobile app and it is really important. Um, yeah. So I'm looking forward to that session. I know that a lot of our clients will also be looking forward to that session. A lot of businesses as well are doing the exact same thing. It seems like it's a very timely topic. So. Uh, definitely that one. But if I did have to call out one specific one, Kaz and I always seem to share the same sessions that we like. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm really looking forward to having Charlie from Prudential. Um, Prudential is actually one of our clients here in the region. So sharing around uh, how to bring your leaders closer to their teams, just removing that pedestal um, from leadership and, and just sharing from comms. We actually had her as part of our panel last year as well. So I'm looking forward to her uh, sharing on the main stage live in London too. I was gonna say, stepping up from panel to solo session, that's at 11.30 on day two. So prudential not to be missed. Favoritism from Sim. She picked a client in her own region. That's not allowed. <laughs> I only no. plug things from our region. <laughs> of course, of course. Um, okay, cool. Well, that'll be one not to be missed as well with Charlotte. Um, who's uh, Director, Executive and Internal Communications, Group Corporate Affairs at Prudential. That is a lot of responsibility for one person. Looking forward to hearing more about that story. Ian, what about you? Anything you have spotted in that agenda that piques your interest? 
You know, I'm surprised nobody said anything about Stephen Fry. You know, I, I'm yeah, sorry. Like, I don't want to be that guy, guy but <laughs> yeah. huge fan of Stephen Fry. Used to watch Jeeves and Worcester as a kid. You know, <laughs> very excited to potentially meet him. So definitely looking forward to that session. But on a more, I don't want to say on a more serious note. That that mm. implies the wrong thing. But from a more client-specific standpoint, I'm very interested to see what National Grid has to say around. Um, using sort of the company and organizational values as sort of that supporting framework yes. for driving sure. employee experiences. I think too often from a sales perspective, we're talking to people around, can it do this? Can it do that? And it's very much functionality and it's not, it's not what we have. It's how you leverage it, what underpins it. So I think that that's going to be a really valuable session for people that are perhaps just starting out on their journeys or trying to find a way to, to evolve it. Yeah. Really nice one as well. Really nice one too. Um, Okay, so for me, I was going to put out the networking lunch. That's always a highlight of the day. <laughs> it is good. The networking part or the lunch part? Yeah. <laughs> it's all great stuff. Um, I actually... Um, oh, you've all chosen ones that I was going to call out. No, I'm joking. I actually am really interested to hear from Grace Beverly because, um, because she's an, an entrepreneur. So she's, she's built something up herself from the ground up and now um, can share all of those insights about what it means to be the CEO of a, you know, really disruptive businesses um, and kind of share that insight into how she runs those organizations in a way which is kind of meeting the needs of the modern consumer. Um, so I think that's going to be a really interesting one as well. And kind of talking about productivity hacks. I love a good hack. I love a good kind of like, you know, that means that there's going to be ideas that we can kind of, you know, learn from them, that kind of best practice, take it away, trial it in our own organizations. So things like that, I think are really cool. So I think that's going to be... She's a really interesting and engaging speaker as well. If anyone wants a bit mm -hmm. of pre-reading or pre-listening or pre-watching, she's on um, the Diary of a CEO podcast and she has a really great session with Stephen Bartlett. Tying so, it so. back into Stephen. <laughs> 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 but but like, it, she'll, she, I reckon she'll come with so much interesting things. A, she's kind of like a Gen Z CEO. So for those of you that are having to communicate with... Gen, Gen Z, you'll kind of see her perspective and, and see what mindset she has, but also she has so much great content that she's given out there, so we want to make sure that like the productivity hats, that kind of um, working hard, hardly working message that she lands um, elsewhere is, uh, yeah, gives you some stuff, hopefully you'll take away to be able to communicate with your workforce. Yeah. So that will be a great session. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, so, I mean, let's just... Um, look at a, a quick summary of this agenda then over two days so i mean if we're talking about first day here's where the you know we're really going to get you pumped before everything kicks off you've got um co-box which is fight club meets nightclub 50 minute high intensity boxing class you know maybe i should do that maybe i should lead by example so hopefully we'll see some of you there that would be good um really kind of energize you before we kind of get into the presentation portion Registration, breakfast and networking kicking off at 8 a.m. Nice and early, but mainly focused on eating some good food, meeting people in attendance, kind of starting to build those those kind of professional networks with each other and kind of understand who's in the room and who we're going to get to have some more detailed conversations with over the course of the conference. Then kicking off the start of day one, you've got Stephen Fry, uh, Fry's future of work. Going to be amazing. Um, one not to be missed. Um, bringing back the panel format, Ask an internal comms expert, Kaz. You've been hosting these uh, yes. online so for you, a while now. Yeah. So that, that format that we trial became so popular, both in the session in Unite and following up as well, because ultimately people start the year and uh, as you get towards the end of the year, people have loads of questions. You know, is this a problem that's unique to my organization? Um, how are other people dealing with this challenge? How are they dealing with leadership comms? All these things that just being able to hear from other organizations directly, what are you doing for this? Or what do you think about this? It seems to be proving really popular. So back again. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And then we're hearing from iRobot as well, who are gonna be talking about how a small team running 
you know, an out of the box internet product and maximizing its potential, which I think is really important. You know, we're more and more being asked to do more with less. So how can productized solutions, you know, productized intranets really still meet the requirements of the modern enterprise and be run by small or lean teams? Um, so that's going to be great to hear from iRobot. And then the, the deep dive piece, the kind of, you know, uh, round table discussion forum bit on day one, jumping straight into content governance. I think too often governance gets a bad rep. You know, we're going to be talking about the challenges of governance and why it's so important, right? You know, as we push these employee experience platforms forwards, we need to be cognizant of how we maintain their value over time. So that's going to be a really good one. Leading us straight into a networking lunch. Um, we'll be, you know, loitering in the room if you want to speak to us at this point. <laughs> Um, but probably just kind of relaxing and getting ready for the afternoon because we're coming back with more great content. Um, so straight off the bat, you've got realigning employees behind your values in a hybrid world. So digging into the kind of hybrid scenarios and how you can sh still kind of maintain high levels of engagement, maintain your company culture in the face of a more physically disconnected uh, employee base. Um, and that is the team at National Grid. Um, and another best practice deep dive there on information architecture so how do people navigate all the rich content you deliver in the digital employee experience platform um, that's going to be a really good one balancing search against uh, content structures and using metadata and all those kind of interesting topics which really maximize uh, our intranets we already talked about the mastering mobile session, which is following on after that. And then we've got a session on the future of intranets. So kind of turning our attention to the future and what you can expect from the next decade of digital employee experience innovation. So that would be a really interesting one as well. And then finally, uh, we have a content relevancy deep dive as well. I mean, we've talked about this a lot on the podcast. How do you make sure that the experiences, content and comms you deliver are really, you know, targeted to the individual. I mean, Ian, this is probably something that you hear day in, day out from all the organizations you speak to, right? Oh yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. And I always say that like, you know, there's this notion of content is king. And I always, you know, I'm like, I want to introduce a slight nuance and that content relevancy is king. Cause if I log in and I see a ton of stuff that I don't care about, then I don't really feel engaged over here. So yeah, yeah, a lot, lot to unpack there. Actually, I'm very excited about the, the sessions that we're doing. I feel like these ones are a little bit more targeted towards specific aspects of the employee experience versus yeah. like thinking about it from like a hybrid or a global or, you know, sort of a more device specific. Uh, yeah, you know, come come hang out on the deep drive track, get your hands dirty, you know, yeah, let's start <laughs> sharing some problems. A problem shared is a problem halved. Uh, and the round tables give you just that opportunity with people way more intelligent than myself who maybe have the answer. So that's going to be good. Um, and then um, we have another exciting keynote on day one yet to be announced as well, which is really good. But at the end of day one, straight in with the party, the London calling party. Now, I have to say, our team have been very tight-lipped about exactly what to what to expect from this. Now, the only thing they have shared so far is that we have an Oasis tribute band, which I'm very excited about. Who here is a fan of Oasis? I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of the name, one. No Oasis. <laughs> oh no my Oasis. god. <laughs> okay, well, we're not even gonna cover that in any more detail now. All I know is that the London calling parts have pulled out all the stops. It's gonna be a good opportunity for us to decompress after quite a rich first day. Especially if you attend those deep dives, you're gonna probably want to have a you know, a bit more of a chill time, a bit of music, a bit of chance to have a conversation, which isn't about internal comms or intranets, which is fun. And then we roll straight into day two, kicking off uh, day two. Again, breakfast, networking, all the good bits you'd expect. And then in with Grace Beverly, which as I've already said, it's gonna be really cool to hear from her, get her perspective on um, running modern organizations and how you can keep your, your workforce kind of productive and, and um, you know, balancing that against, you know, the work-life balance. Uh, you know, that we all need to, to be effective. Um, then we're into Prudential, leadership, removing the pedestal. I actually quite like that title, by the way, as well. Kudos to the, the individual who yeah. wrote the title for that session. Yeah, Very Casey, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tip our hat to Casey. Um, she was on the podcast once, for those of you who have been here from the early days of the podcast. Um, elevating your internet experience through collaboration is next on the agenda with Farm Credit. Um, so that's going to be really good. Um, strategic collaboration between IT and communication teams to deliver success. 
really good, really important. You know, how do different um, you know functional teams come to t together to deliver the best employee experiences? Um, and then on the deep dive track, there's also then uh, following that infrastructure, security, and engineering. So a chance to hear from some of the tech wizards in the Unily team who are going to be sharing the latest and greatest on what we're doing and how they keep all the cogs turning on a modern uh, you know, cloud-based internet as a service. Um, networking lunch, then straight after lunch, everyone's kind of refreshed into Unily the future. Very, again, staying a little bit tight-lipped about this one, more details to come, but you're going to find out the, uh, the next hot thing that Yuli is working on and where we're taking our platform forward, which will be very exciting. And now, sadly, into the last few sessions of day two, um, everything under one roof, weaving together a global and regional digital experience. Um, and that's uh, with Anne-Marie Ferrara, who's global digital experience at WSP. Um, so really interesting session as well. Um, deploying an all new employee experience platform to level up engagement for 66,000 employees and a very diverse workforce. So again, one of those really good, um, you know, up close and personal kind of customer stories, kind of dig into the detail there. Um, then you've got engaging your front line, uh, another session following on from that, um, tackling the frontline work of Disconnect, which as we've said is a really critical topic at the moment. And then we have a session on getting started with employee journeys. So if you haven't already kind of heard about this, this is something that Unly has been working on um, and uh, you know, bring it to market. It's all about how we make more of the moments that matter across the employee life cycle. So we're gonna help uh, you, know, you workshop some ideas about what are the key events in the employee life cycle and how can you make more of those. Um, and then finally, there's using your internet to drive high performance culture. Um, which is Pearson, as Kaz already said. And there's also a chance to hear from our product innovation team, who you will all know is Hannah, Katie and Leslie, the three leads of product innovation at Unly. And then one more party for you all. Yay! <laughs> you guys, you guys think well, at the end of day two, I'm just going to be too tired to be celebrating at the party. <laughs> I definitely won't miss this one because if you Google the Libertine, it's basically in the vault beneath the Royal Exchange and it's um, it just looks so cool. I think it was built in like, I don't know, like 1550 or something like that. Like, And it was where the first alcohol license in the UK got granted. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that should tell you a bit about how fun that's going to be. <laughs> that's going to be incredible. One so, of my, um, oh, no, one of my colleagues on. the other day, um, he talked about osmosis as this whole idea of being together. I think that's, I guess, the best part about even like the networking lunches and breakfasts and after parties is just, you never know what kind of conversations, random conversations come out from a little drink in your hand, meeting someone at the bar, you know, <laughs> what, what are you going to learn? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do yeah. I want to know what my conversation was? <laughs> well, with all of that said, you're probably wondering, Matt, this all sounds incredible. Like, how do I get involved? I'm going to tell you right now, unly.com forward slash unite. If you're an intranet manager, you work in internal comms, you work in HR, you work in IT, you work in digital employee experience, or have a vested interest in delivering a better digital employee experience for your organization and crucially your people, unly.com forward slash unite. That's the URL you need to remember and you need to click on that register now button. It's pink, you can't miss it. And from there, you can get signed up, attend how you like in person. We'd love to see you. If you choose remote, I'll be a little bit sad, but you know, I'll get over it. And otherwise, we're all looking forward to it. September 13th to 14th, game on. Hi, I'm Grace Beverly. I'm an entrepreneur, author, and host of the Working Hard, Hardly Working podcast. I'm super excited to share that I will be headlining Unilee's Employee Experience Conference, Unite 23, this September. Um, I'm going to be doing a keynote, Working Hard, Hardly Working, Productivity Hacks for Your Workforce, and I can't wait to see you there.